All right, guys, we are live. This is Race Talk with Jordan Balasico. Today, I am joined by NASCAR Xfinity and Kemper Road Truck Series driver Chris Wright. Chris, how are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. So, I want to start off with the news that Atlanta Motor Speedway did yesterday. How, what are your thoughts on the uh, repavement of Atlanta Motor Speedway coming up? I, I, I haven't run there yet, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I'm excited to see I, it, it'll be a higher grip track so uh -huh. yeah, i'm excited about that but it doesn't really matter to me one way or the other because i haven't run it yet okay so i was looking back on like on your current stuff so did you start out in sports cars and work up to racing what was that did you start out and did you start out in sports cars and work your way up to nascar yeah, so, yeah i started out doing touring cars um and then I did some open wheel stuff and prototypes and kind of bounced back and forth between all the different road course series. And then uh, decided to go NASCAR racing um, over when, when COVID hit because I was supposed to race mm -hmm. in 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah, COVID hit, did, yeah, COVID hit pretty hard last year with a bunch of those racing series and stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I was uh, a couple weeks ago, I interviewed um, Samantha Tan from the 24 8 series, and she said that. Um, she said that this year COVID's really getting them a lot too. I know a couple weeks ago they just canceled the uh their um Portugal race that they were supposed to have this upcoming yeah. weekend. Yeah, good old Sam. She was she was one of my first teammates in professional racing. So. Nice. That's pretty cool. So yeah. um so how, so are you so are you signed with both Young's Motorsports and Sam Hunt Racing? Yeah, so I'm doing the all the all, all the uh paved ovals in, in the truck with young uh -huh. and i'm doing it under the course of the sam okay so what has been your favorite race so far this year um daytona was really interesting um and for road courses we did pretty well at mid ohio so i'd have to probably say that yeah mid ohio is about like an hour and hour and 10 minutes from me from where i live at okay how did you like Mid Ohio? I like. I've been there a bunch. Um, we were doing pretty well. We, were, we went from thirtieth to sixth in the last stage, and then got taken out. So it was we we were fast, but uh, you know we ended up getting wrecked by another car. So it happens. So it so um so now you raced in ARCA too, correct? I thought, yeah, I've done some arc races. Okay. Um. Now, will you be running the? Uh, will you be running Knoxville this weekend? No. No. Okay. So you're. Uh, so you So when's your? So when's your next race for Xfinity and um truck? Uh, next race for Xfinity is Watkins Glen. Mm -hmm. Race after that is Indianapolis with Xfinity. And then Gateway and trucks. Okay, pretty good tracks coming up. I've been to Indianapolis before. I've been to the 500 before. Okay. So that's a pretty good track. Um. So over the week, over the course of the week, I um asked some of my uh people if they had any questions for you. Yep. And my one friend Mike, he has a very good question. Let me see what his was. It was. He said, he said, what is the difference on how the cars handle between Xfinity and, and your um, previous racing background? Oh, um, it's totally different. It's like playing hockey versus ping pong. I can't even describe to you how different, you know, the NASCARs are to the sports cars or the formula cars because they're, they're just so much heavier. They're not supposed to be on road courses at all. Um, mm. you know, it's just, it's so much different, so much different. It's like the difference between like a monster truck and a rally car. I don't know. It's, it's really different. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, my, uh, my normal co-host is, uh, John Bandle. He says he's pitted for you a few times. Who? Uh, John Bandle. He's a tire carrier. He says he's pitted for you a few times. Okay. Yeah. 
Let's see. I got another question for you from one of my friends. I think it was a, I think it was a late model question. I'm not sure. I gotta look. Yes, she said, "Why did you? Why did you decide to run for an underfunded team instead of like one of those major teams like Gibbs or Hendrick or Junior Motorsports?" Um, because the sponsorship just wasn't there to go to one of those to those teams. I mean, it's significantly more expensive to run with a. GMS or KBM or Gibbs mm -hmm. or Junior or whatever it is. Okay. So just the sponsorship wasn't there for us. Okay. And then he wanted to know um, of out of all the other racing types of racing in the entire in the world, what made you want to go to stock car racing? Um being an American and not having done it yet, um, you know, it was always it was always really interesting to me. Um, and uh, you know, I just didn't uh, I didn't see a really viable future um, with sponsorship or any of the money with sports cars or formula cars because you know NASCAR is so much bigger, so sponsors would much rather be on a NASCAR than something else. That ultimately is what kind of made me choose NASCAR over something else. Okay, yeah, and that's because we get like those those mean those big sponsors too, like Monster, uh, yeah. Exaltra, all those other times. Now, in the past, what has been your favorite race in the past since you've been racing in your career? Um, gosh, there's so many of them. Um, the Rolex 24 at Daytona was I love doing that. That was a lot of fun. Um, and then the races down in St. Petersburg, Florida for the IndyCar weekend were a lot of fun. Um, so, I mean, there's a bunch of them. It's just different. Those are probably the top two. Okay. Um, so I'm reading my, uh, I'm reading my uh, questions here in my little comment section. And my friend Xavier wants to know, would you ever run the 24 Hours of Le Mans if you had the chance? Yeah, yeah, that was, I was supposed to do that. Um, in 2020, uh, COVID hit, so you know that was one of my dreams. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I've uh, I've uh, done that track virtually. I've done that. I've raced that track virtually. It's kind of kind of fun to do it on a video game, but I know in real life it's probably like a little bit bumpier and stuff. Same with the yeah. uh, Rolex. Um. Now, when did you now? When did you first start getting? Now, when did you first start racing? Uh, I was nineteen. I ran Pirelli World Challenge in a touring car. Okay. Did you do any go karts or anything like that? Nope. Just no jump straight in this. No, nothing. Okay. Um. Now, uh, now I know today is the 20th anniversary of Dale Jr.'s uh, Daytona win at the Pepsi 100. Where was you at? Where was you at? And what was you doing when he won that race uh, six months after losing his dad? Uh, I was on vacation with my family. Uh, we were in Florida, not Daytona. We were in. Uh, the other side of where we were in Naples visiting family. Okay. So and and so you grew up in uh did you grow up in Pennsylvania? Yeah, Pittsburgh. Okay. Ah, Steel Town, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um let's see. Let's see if I got any other ones for you. Not I'll got some. If not, I'll come up with some for you. Um, and again, I do appreciate you taking some time out your uh, out your day to join me on race talk today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, I know back in uh back in February, I interviewed um Bill Lester on the twenty four eight on the twenty four eighty eight podcast that my friend Mike McMahon runs, and I talked to him about diversity in NASCAR. What do you think about the diversity in NASCAR program? Um, I think it's it, 
it's a good program, especially since they're trying to go to these new bigger cities or just different cities. Um, you know, I think it can only help the sport. So, you know, it's, uh, I mean, Bubba is doing a really great job, you know, bringing a ton of different sponsors to the sport. I mean, his, Oh, he really is. Yeah. He, he that's a crazy good program they have going on over 2311, uh, for sure. Yeah, I know. When I seen that, I'm like, I got to like, I gotta give Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan props. I'm like, Michael Jordan comes into this sport, starts a team up, and they got, what, their first top five at, like, uh, Pocono, I think, because of the fuel mileage and stuff. Yep. Now, fuel mileage races, I like fuel mileage races. Do you like those fuel mileage races where you have to scramble to see if you can make it all the way to the end? Yeah, I, I think it's fun. I haven't really been in a scenario where it's mattered that much, but I'm looking forward to them. Okay, so let's see. Who else do we got? Okay, answer that. Now, do you hope to, now do you plan on running full time in the Xfinity or Truck Series in the near future? Uh, I'm talking about doing full time. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll be. Are you gonna? So I'll be going to my first Cup race in 19 years in uh, September at Bristol Motor Speedway. Oh, cool. Yep. So I'm hoping to see some. Hope to see some first-time winners there. I know Haley. I know Haley Diggins running good this year. Hope to see how good she does. Uh, Bailey Curry. Uh, Weatherman, those are some of my favorites in the Xfinity series right now, and AJ Allmendinger. Yeah. So, hopefully, so hopefully the next few races are going to be good. I know the playoffs is. Uh, I know the playoffs is coming up pretty soon. Seems like it seems like the season just started, honestly. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. So, when COVID hit last year, you said you had plans on running the. Uh, you said you had plans on running the. Uh, I'm so serious last year. Is that correct? No, I was going to run uh, Formula 3 over in Europe and do some prototype racing over there. Okay. Uh, but I just couldn't travel back and forth from the States to Europe. Mm -hmm. So, so you're pretty much, so you pretty much an all around racer for like different series and stuff? Yeah, I raced pretty much all around Europe. Uh, okay. Porsches and Formula 3 cars and everything. No. Do you have a favorite track that you've raced at before that you like? Um, Red Bull Ring in Austria is really cool. And uh, um, Porto Mayo, Porto Mal in Portugal is really cool. Okay. So. Yeah, Red Bull Ring. That's Red Bull Ring. That's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite European tracks. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we got. Okay, people, what's your questions? You just had them like last week. <laughs> Do you ever plan on running dirt in the future? Yeah. Um, it'd have to be in a dirt car, though, not a NASCAR car. <laughs> um, you know, I want to – I think the uh, some of the sprint cars look really cool. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, we got some technical difficulties. I think your mic is is on um, muted. Let's see. There now. we go. Right. Yep. <laughs> I was like, I said the mic was muted. I'm like, what happened? Yeah, someone called me, so um, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, yeah. The spring cars are really cool. So. You know, maybe I'll get in one of those or a micro, or we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Kyle Larson's tearing it up and hit when he tearing it up in his spec car. 
yeah, he's he's pretty good. Yeah, he's been. Um, have you ever? Have you? Um, what are some of the guys and what are some of the guys that's in the past that, that you've liked racing against or being teammates with? In the past, um, uh, Manuel Maldonado. He uh, raked me in nineteen over in uh, Britain, and he was a. Uh, I really like being being his teammate. We're good buddies. Um, but there's a bunch of them. I mean, Derek Grist is a prototype driver. There's, there's quite a few of them that uh, they're good. So we'll see. Yeah, there's, okay. there's, there's there's quite a few of them. But right now, yeah, Spencer Boyd and I are pretty close. So it's, just, it's cool. Yeah, Spencer Boy, he's been having – speaking of the truck series, I want to talk about your awesome Darlington throwback to Kevin Harvick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that was not a throwback to Kevin Harvick. That was a throwback to Ron Hornaday. Okay. And a lot of people thought it was Kevin Harvick, but it was a Ron Hornaday throwback. Uh, but, yeah, that was really – I really liked that. Really, really liked that throwback. That was cool as heck. Yeah, did the uh, – was it the team? Was it the team that came up with it, or was it, or was it you who came so up with that, that idea? Like my my brother and I came up with it. So. Okay. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, I was like, whoa! There we go. I was like, now that's a throwback. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. Ron Hunter appreciated it. Yeah, he did. It was really neat. Yeah, because I first seen it, I was like, I was like, I was like, okay, Harvick, and then I forgot that Ron Hornaday raced the number six for KHI back in the day. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It was good. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. Now, which teams did you drive for in um, Pirelli? Uh, Kinetic. Kinetic Motorsports, which is where Sam Samantha Tan drove as well. Okay. Okay, and when you raced uh, the Rolex Twenty Four at Daytona, who did you um, who did you ride along with, and who did you team up with? Uh, team was Performance Tech Racing. I teamed up with Kyle Masson. Uh, his dad, forget his name. Get his name, um, and then Cameron Castle was the uh, fourth driver. Okay. Yeah. So, what's the um? So, I've always wondered this. So, what's the driver change like during that twenty-four hour race? It's not nothing too crazy. Um, like we you practice it so much that it's second nature. So, mm -hmm. it's uh pretty easy to do you, you practice it probably a hundred times before you you go race so it's not that bad it takes us like 20 seconds or so okay yeah. so do you like so do you like when it's like transitions from day to night or from night to day in those races um i like the the nighttime pretty neat i like the nighttime a lot so yeah I, so I've heard that they so do they light the track up like with like the with like colorful lights and stuff like that during the twenty four or is that just uh or is that just people talking? Um, there are colorful lights there, but it's most mostly like some of the the fan um, attractions. It's not the racetrack. There's not many lights um, on the infield of Daytona. So. Okay. Now, when you ran Coda. Did you? How was your experience running Coda for the first time, man, in the rain? Yeah, no, it was good. Um, it was a uh, higher grip than I thought it'd be. I always thought I liked running in NASCAR a lot at the time. Yeah, no, because I know that truck's mostly for like Formula One or yeah. IndyCar. Yeah. But I know I watched that Cup race, and I can't believe how badly it was pouring and. You know, when Truex, yeah. when Custer went up on the Truex, I was like, that kind of scared me a little bit because I'm like, I hope Truex is okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was that was unfortunate. All right. Just do. It.
if you could be teammates with anyone, who would you want to be teammates with? That's currently driving? Currently, yes. In what series? Um, any series. Um, um, probably he's a heck of a driver yeah, yeah. yep i know he's he's having a heck of a say i know he's six time indycar champion i'm hopefully he gets his hoping he gets his seventh this year yeah that'd be, might. Really, that'd be really good yeah. well chris i appreciate you taking some time to be on race talk today Yep. And I'm going to, oh, no, oh, you're welcome. I'm going to try and get uh, Spencer Boyd on here at some point if he's interested. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be a good time. Yeah. So. All right. Well, well, you, um, have a good night, man. You too, buddy. Good luck. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So that's, um, so there's that. Um, I say that was pretty good. Um, let me get. So I know uh, Atlanta's repaving the track. I'm not really too fond on that, but I think it should do. But I think it should make for better racing. So hopefully, so that was Chris Wright. For those of you who's not sure who he is, he races in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and the Truck Series. Let's do a... So let's see. So this weekend we have the truck series in Knoxville. And then we have Xfinity and the Cup series. All right, let's pull up. Let's talk. Let's see what we got going on here. So we have Atlanta coming up for the Xfinity series and the truck series. We got Kyle Busch on the pole for the X, for the Xfinity series, and then for the Cup, I believe we have. Let's see, who do we have on the pole for the Cup series? Let's see. So we got Chase Elliott on the pole for Atlanta. We got Kyle Busch on the pole for the. Uh, for the Xfinity series at Atlanta, and then we got the truck series in Knoxville. That should be a good race. A lot of guys, you know, we got Dan, Danny Shots uh, doing this. So, all right. And then we have, I think we have the IndyCar this weekend. I think IndyCar is racing this weekend. Let's see if they are racing this weekend, and I will uh, highlight what's preview that.
All right, so. Well, I was about to say Verizon IndyCar series. Wow. Hey, buddy, what's up? Nothing much. Hey, did you catch the interview? Yes, I did. I say it went pretty good. I'll say it did. We had a little bit of some technical difficulties. Hey, um, for the IndyCar series, you watch IndyCar, correct? I try my best. All right. So, it's kind of, um, kind of hard with NASCAR and IndyCar sometimes. Is true, time. true. Um, so I'm looking at the schedule. The IndyCar's next race is actually the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix, and that's going to be on August 8th at 5:30 p.m. on NBCSN Peacock for the timing and scoring. And the race details are going to be on Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Um, Music City Grand Prix is actually the first ever race on the streets of Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, that's gonna so, be that's gonna be a fun race. That is gonna be a fun race. I agree. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so I was uh, so I seen something today about uh vers about Max Verstappen. I thought it was pretty cool. So Max Verstappen has. Basically, he won both Red Bull races, if I'm not correct. You are correct. All right. And so the Austrian uh, Grand Prix and the Austrian Grand Prix. Okay. So as I'm looking, so it looks like the, the season is going to end in December instead of the normal De instead of the normal November October because of COVID. Now I don't know if you've seen it or not, but they did lose the Australian Grand the Aus the Australian Grand Prix. Yes, I I. Got that right when it was announced. So my so my thoughts is if they're going to do the Australia, so I'm trying to figure out what race if they're going to do a double race, like they are for like they are for United States. I think they're having two races at Coda this year. That is up in the air right now. Uh -huh. That's something we don't know, but I think. Either United States is going to get two races because the Singapore Grand Prix being canceled. Mm -hmm. I think Bahrain is going to get a race on the outer one. Okay. Making that a uh -huh. Making that a race in Bahrain and then followed by the season finale in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a good one. No, I like Abu Dhabi. I like that track. So, I'm thinking if I think Max Verstappen can actually pull it off and um, win the championship this year. He could. He could. Let me pull up but, the point mm -hmm. as of right now. Mm -hmm. Let me just get my Formula One app. Oh, you're good, buddy. You're good, buddy. But I seen something where I think it said Lewis Hamilton signed on a. Uh, a two-year extension for up until 2023 with Mercedes. I saw that too. That is yeah, I was. I was for sure. I was for sure he was going to leave. Yeah, that, that was kind of a. That really wasn't a surprise to see Hamilton mm -hmm. resign with Mercedes. Now I wouldn't mind seeing um seeing him running with the uh, running with the big boys in IndyCar. <laughs> I could see I him mean, doing it. I mean, hey, Formula One. I mean, hey, Alonso did it. Yes, Alonso did it. I was actually at that race when he ran the five hundred. Trying to think who else did it. I think Alonso did it. Montoya's done, done it. Done. Montoya's done. won it twice. And then um, doing it now. Uh -huh. I think Mario Andretti, of course, he, he did everything. Speaking of an Andretti, I have some breaking news out of NASCAR. Marco Andretti is interested in running some NASCAR Xfinity Series races in 2022. Mm. And Andretti back in NASCAR. That's I agree. That is awesome. I agree. When I saw that, I'm like, okay. Because he's currently running part time in the in, in the IndyCar. Actually, no, he's not even running at all in the IndyCar no. series this year. He only ran up the the five hundred. The same. Yep. Now, Helio Castroneves is coming back for another race. 
Yeah, Elio is going to come. Chances are, I think Elio is going to run the Indy 500 next year. And try to go for, try to go for five. Trying to go for five, break the record. Hey, he can do it. I mean, yeah. he did pretty he good this year. Him. Oh yeah, that I remember. Impressive. It was. I remember it was the 2017 Indy 500. I was there. Helio takes the lead with seven to go. I'm like, yes, 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 you got this. And then sure enough, like maybe like four to three laps to go, here comes Sato. Yep. Tomasa Sato goes right past him. And I'm like, dude, seriously, I'm like, you just ruined something for me. <laughs> the past two years, Scott Dixon was doing good in the Indy 500. Mm -hmm. It was Takuma Sato that was. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Is that something? Scott Dixon is doing great up until his wreck. You know, I missed that wreck. Like, I was in turn. I was, I was like, I was at the beginning of pit road out of turn four. So I completely did not see the wreck over in turn one. I saw it on the, on the, on the screens, and I was like, holy crap! Yeah, that that was scary seeing that car go go up and over. It was. So, I noticed that um. I'm says running again at the walk at Watkins Glen, or did they already this week, this past weekend? They did this past week for the weather tax forty. Right, because they had lost the Canadian tire. Yes. Okay. So they, I haven't uh, really uh, been, I haven't really followed much on um uh I'm said this year. I think the only race that I watched was the uh, Rolex Twenty Four at Daytona. I've watched the Rolex Twenty Four. Uh huh. The 12 hours of sea brain. Of course, I watch both Watkins Glen races because mm -hmm. Watkins Glen is my home track. I love Watkins Glen. It's one Me of my too. favorite tracks. I love racing it on NASCAR Heat or Project Cars or anytime I'm racing a virtual game. I love racing Watkins Glen. I, I raced it virtually on NR2003. Mm -hmm. And that I got good lap times there. I'm running about 115, 116. Mm hmm That's not bad. So, let's do, before we sign off, let's do uh, a preview for Atlanta and Knoxville. All right. So, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but Kyle Busch is on the Pulford Xfinity Series, which, is his, it, yeah. which is his last Xfinity Series race this year. It might be his last one ever, unless he decides to leave the Cup Series and go full-time at Xfinity. I've As you can see, Ben. As you can see behind me, I got my Kyle Busch little picture hanging up there. The only thing I have behind me is my American flag. And that's what else I got behind me. I like that. I, oh, I have, yeah. I have a science picture of Gordon. <laughs> and then Chase Elliott has, um, is on the pole for the, for the Cup Series at Atlanta. Imagine that. An Elliott on the pole for his home race. But it's the guy in second. Who is in second? Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch, right? Yeah, second. yeah, yeah. In the cup now, race. I'm looking forward to the season finale of SRX at uh, Nashville Fairgrounds, Bill Elliott versus Chase Elliott. Oh, yeah. Elliott versus Elliott. So I wonder if one of those two wins, will they sound, will they sound the siren? Hmm. I don't know. I think they might. It's Elliott. I think oh, they yeah. Might. Oh, yeah. So... There are 40 trucks entered for Knoxville, and they, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna miss the show. All right. So I think how they're doing is how they did it for Bristol. They're doing the inverts after each. Oh no, I think I'm not sure how they're doing is, it, but that means that Jessica Frieson can actually race the truck series with her husband because no, uh, because no trucks are because nobody's going home. Uh. Stuart and Jessica are actually local to me. Oh, they are? They live on Niagara on the lake up in Canada. Okay. Right on the border mm -hmm. with, I think it's Lockport, I think the no, first no, no, no. Closest, which is just north of Buffalo. And oh. I, I live about an hour south of Buffalo. Oh, nice. So, local drivers. Of course, Can't I see that. Around. Of course, the local driver near me, Graham Rahal. Mm. Ohio. They actually moved their um. They actually moved their uh. 
um, Bray Hall Letterman actually moved from Hilliard, Ohio to uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. But to continue on with Nashville, or mm-hmm. Nashville. Mm-hmm. Who, do you, who do you think has an advantage? I can tell you who I think has an advantage. It's going to be the guys, it's going to be the guys and girls that have run on dirt before. Mm-hmm. For example, hey. I was looking for uh, I was looking for Kyle Larson to enter into the Knoxville race. Yeah, <laughs> he's actually no way he is in Knoxville, the Knoxville Nationals. He's in the, na- the, the Nationals, but I don't think he's running the truck race. No, he's running the Nationals though. He'll win. I can already see it. Yeah, kind of like when Tony Stewart's on a dirt track. Beating up them young guys. I'm just kidding. Just I mean, kidding. I like having the like cup guys come down for a race or two because the younger guys are racing them and they're getting that experience mm-hmm. they're running against the cup drivers. Mm-hmm. Now, thing with NASCAR, that big announcement made by Justin Marks last week. I've been wanting to talk about it, but Track House buying Chip Ganassi Racing. I was not expecting that. Neither was I. It's like, where did this money come from? I mean, you just, you're a starter team. And I'm thinking maybe Justin Marks and Pitbull combined got together and said, hey, why don't we buy a charter from another team Chip Ganassi said he did not want he said Ganassi Racing was not up for sale. No. But I guess Justin Marks made the right offer and he and that's when Chip Ganassi said, Yeah, I'll buy the uh then he said when he said, Yeah, he'll sell the team to him. So now my question is, who drives that second car for track house? Will it be Kurt Bush? Will it be Ch- Ross Chastain? There's rumors that Kurt Bush is going over to twenty three eleven with uh Bubba Wallace. Mm-hmm. I've heard Kurt Busch is going to retire. I've heard that too, but he said, but then he said that I'm not going anywhere. So sure. that makes you wonder: Will he stay in that one car, or switch over to the 42, whichever number Track House decides to keep? If they keep those numbers, that is true. That's very true. So because it's not set to a certain car number, right? It's set to a team, so. Here's what I'm thinking. So you so you get, so you take away the one car, give it back to Dale Hart Jr. You see where I'm going here? Bring Michael Annette up from the Xfinity series, put Junior Motorsports in the Cup series with that number one car. Yeah. But Junior announced that he has no plans of coming into the Cup series quite yet because of the charter system is way too expensive in his that day. that and there's also reason for that. Because he has an alliance with Rick Hendrick, and you can only have four cars in the Cup Series. Yeah. And but if he was to bring, you can't have an alliance because Joe Gibbs Racing has an alliance for twenty three eleven. Right. They've and always had somewhere. Joe Gibbs has always had an alliance, whether it was with twenty three eleven, uh, Furniture Demar Row, Henry, Furniture Row. They've always had an alliance. Because I feel like. Here's how I feel. I feel like Joe Gibbs is going to do what Joe Gibbs wants to do. Yeah. But um, I want to see. But I'm hoping this weekend. I'm pulling for. I'm pulling for Deegan this weekend, man. She's. Yeah. These last few races has just been a bummer for her, and it's not even her fault. No, it's just bad luck. Bad luck. I mean, she did great. I mean, she she was doing great in Daytona Road Course until some until NASCAR decided to not throw a caution for her. She was she was doing good in the season opener at Daytona until her that spin. Then of course the road course. I don't. I'm not sure where she was running at Darlington when that wreck happened, but I think she might have been caught up in it. I think she was running in at least. I think she was running in 16th or 17th. I mean, oh, when they all crashed together on the front stretch, well, I thought that was completely stupid. That was just boneheaded driving right there. Yeah, that was that was two K K 
KBM driver's going for a win. On a mm-hmm. restart. Mm-hmm. And there were still a lot of laps left. It was like 30 so laps. Mm-hmm. So there's still a lot of time. Mm-hmm. So, real quick, we're going to cover the point system, and then we're going to sign off for the week. All right. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to get a show in last night because I was waiting for uh, for Chris, but it's okay. We'll go ahead and capture this now. So, right now in the regular season, Denny Hamlin is leading the is leading by three points over Kyle Larson. He has seven hundred and ninety eight. Kyle Larson has seven hundred and ninety five. However, Denny Hamlin doesn't have those wins. So, if the playoffs was to start tomorrow, Kyle Larson would be first, followed by Mark Trex Jr. and then. Kurt Busch, Chase Elliott, Alex, no, wait, scratch that. Larson, it'd be Larson, Truex, Bowman as those top three because of those three wins, that, because of the four wins and the three wins that they have. Yeah. So the cutoff right now, the cutoff is uh, Michael McDowell, Ross Chastain, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Matt Deependetta with Bubba Wallace sneaking in at 21st. Right now, Chris Busher is holding on that 16th spot, but you have Daytona 500 winner who automatically makes the playoffs. Yeah. So that would leave uh, Chris Busher and Ross Chastain on the bubble. So out of those two guys, I think Chastain has a good chance of making it into the playoffs. I agree. Chastain recently has been performing. He really has. And I'm, and, I'm, and it was kind of a bummer seeing that he was um, possibly a free agent next year. All right, let's see. Moving on to the Xfinity series. Really, not much to discuss there. I mean, it's just been all all Austin Cindric and Kyle yeah. Busch most of the year, anyway. <laughs> yeah, Adrian Mendinger's in second. I'm so, if, third. Mm-hmm. so if it was to start, it would be – so, unfortunately, Ty Gibbs is not eligible for the playoffs, no. so that would take him out of the running. Same with Josh Berry. Mm-hmm. He's not eligible, so he's out. Mm-hmm. So, it's up in the air of who, that, of who would make the bubble on that. And then for the – and then for the trucks – then for the truck series, you got John Hunter Nemechek leading the way. Followed by Ben Rhodes, then it would go Todd Gillen and Sheldon Creed would be those first four. Now on the outside looking in is Hallie Deegan. She's running 17th in points, and I don't. I know it's the top 12 if I'm not correct. I think it may be the top eight. No, top eight. Okay, it's yeah. 12 for Xfinity, eight for a truck, 16, 16 for. for so I'm not gonna lie, Haley Diggins having is having a hell of a year. Seventeenth. She's beating Tanner Gray. Mm-hmm. Parker Kligerman. Spencer Boyd. Mm-hmm. Of course, Chris White is in 31st with 86 points. Well, Chris Wright, he's actually not running. He's only on a part-time schedule for yeah. both truck and Xfinity, so he, so he's out. He, he wouldn't make yeah. it anyway. So his running, next... To run in part-time to have 86 points mm-hmm. is pretty good. Yeah, so his next two... His next races in Xfinity is... um, He said Indianapolis and Watkins Glen. Yeah. And then he's going to run Gateway for the truck. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right. So, over in the WeatherTech Sport Championship, we're just going to do quick point standings real quick. In DPI and WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, you've got Ricky Taylor and Felipe Albuquerque, number one in the standings for DPI. LMP2, you got – who do you got for LMP2? Ben Keating and, and Mikko Jensen are your top. Is that the 52 car? I do believe so, yes. Okay. I'm, I think so. I've actually talked with the sponsor of that car. We are. Mm-hmm. We actually communicate on Instagram. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. And there cool. is a possibility 
that they I ha I haven't asked yet. Uh -huh. They may sponsor. Okay, right. cool, cool. That was, All right. that would be pretty cool to have and some sponsor. Oh heck yeah. My virtual car. Mm -hmm. like, and then Mm -hmm. And then LMP, LMP three, you got uh, Gar Robinson and Jonathan Bennett. No, wait a minute, Gar Robinson is leading the way. So up next, they got they got Lime Rock next for LMP three. Lime Rock for LMP, and then DPI is Lime Rock as well. I think no, incorrect. Yes, you got DPI coming at Lime Rock. You don't. I don't think you have LMP two at Lime Rock. I think their next race is Road America because I know they don't run the entire season. Yeah. GTLM, Antonio Garcia and Jordan Taylor are the top teams in yep. Corvette. Yes, Corvette. Yep. And then for GTD, you got you got BMW up there at the top. All right. Yep. All right. Well. So. I say it was a pretty good show this week. We're back to our regular scheduled time next Tuesday at 6.30. It'll be a regular show. You are more than welcome to be on the show. You're more than welcome to be on the show every week if you like to. All right. I will, All right. I will try my best to make it. If I don't, then That's I might perfectly I fine. actually right then as mm -hmm. how the schedule works. All right. Well, Xavier, thank you for joining me. Guys, this has been Race Talk for the week. Everybody have a good night, and we'll see you next week.